Hi everyone, this is I'm Hillary Topper for We Are Triathletes, and it gives me great pleasure today to introduce you to Barbara Cronin Stagnari, who is an expert swimmer and Ironman triathlete. She just went to Kona, and I'm going to, without further ado, introduce you to Barbara. Okay, hi everybody. I'm uh triathlete just like everybody else here um i got an early start in triathlons i swam in high school based on high school i swam for buffalo state college and then i lifeguarded in rockaway beach and uh hanging out in uh, the rain tower bar one time somebody talks me into doing a uh, triathlon which was pretty new at the time so i started did my first try in 1983 which actually was a mile swim, a 25 mile bike and a 13 mile run. Considering I had never run over like four miles, that was a bit of a challenge. To 21, you can do those things. And uh, since then, I probably did 20, 25 years of just sprints because I had small kids. Um, you have four kids in five years and you're not doing much more than sprints. Um, then about 12 years ago, I started into the Ironman distance and I've done Lake Placid 11 times, Brazil twice, Arizona and Kona seven times. So uh, 21 Ironman. My swim is my strongest suit. Uh, my usual Ironman swim is between a 57 and maybe a 101, 102, depending on the course. Um, I do a lot of open water swimming. I'm also a Jones Beach lifeguard. I work down at field four. Um, come down and swim with me. Uh, so I do a lot of open water swim. I've done Manhattan Island swim as a relay. Uh, I've done ten, uh, Little Red Lighthouse 10K open water swim in about two hours. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the water. Awesome. I coached um, CYO uh, kids for 10, 12 years. I've probably done 15 years of coaching master swimming. I'm currently coaching uh, team total training, master swimming. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the water and on the pool deck. Awesome. So Tell us a little bit about what actually the secret is to swimming faster. Okay, I would say the secret is balance and efficiency. Uh, you want to be balanced in the water. Swimming is like anything else, um, an action and a reaction. So if your head is too high, your butt's going to sink. If your butt sinks, your feet are going to spread. If your arms cross over, your, your body tries to balance it, and it causes another reaction where your feet go wide and they sink down um and it goes on and on so the more balanced you're gonna you are the more efficient your stroke will be um being comfortable in the water is huge again if you're not comfortable you're not going to be efficient um and i believe in a powerful stroke okay i have a little bit shorter stroke than most people but short and powerful um and being efficient minimizing drag a lot of people um if your feet are apart, if your feet are down, you're making yourself work way too hard. Tell us, um, give us some examples of some drills that we could use as triathletes to help us get faster and stronger at swimming. Okay, I don't do a lot of drills, but I do have a few I like. Um, one thing I have to say is that if you're going to do drills, then really do them. A lot of people just go through the motions. You really want to use the drill to its full ability and get the best time out of your time in the water. You have to make a concentrated effort to, um, to reach your goal, and, and, and every drill has a purpose. So instead of just going through the motions quickly and getting the drills over with so you can get to work out, it's really working on your stroke. So I like to do a single arm. Pull right arm only, left arm only. You'll see that written as uh, a pair of fins help with that. Uh, use the Alpha Aquasphere Alpha fins. Nice, the nice blue ones, nice and light. Keep your feet up, no cramping. Um, okay, but you want to want to have a wide entry, ten o'clock, two o'clock. Okay, on your stroke, instead of the old crossing over, you want to be wide. Okay, and you're going to do one arm at a time. Keep the elbow up, nice and high through the pull. 
You can focus on one arm at a time, right arm only. Okay, I like to watch my stroke. I see where my hand is going. When I don't see it anymore, I bring it back out. And then left arm. Okay, so you do a lab. You can do 25 or 50 of right arm only, and 25 and 50 of left arm only, or right arm only, uh, lap of swim, uh, left arm only. I also like to do catch up, which is same thing pretty much, but just a little quicker. You're doing one arm at a time. And for me, I find this useless, so I don't rush the end of my stroke. This hand, this hand has to stay here while this arm is swimming. This way you're not pulling immediately, which usually causes you to pull too deep. Okay. Um, I also do head up, head down. Um, water polo <coughs> drill, lifeguard drill, you can call it. Um, your head is completely above the water, so you can see your hands. So I can see my hands are wide. My elbow is high, and I'm going to keep the stroke in front of me. I pull, but I don't go past the shoulder. See how the elbow is in line? I don't end up back here, and I come right back out. And this way, if my head is up, I can see where my hands are, where's my catch, where's my shorter pull, and right back out. Um, it's difficult to do 25s like that, so I like to do five strokes up, relax the head, relax the neck, face in, five strokes down. Five strokes up, five strokes down. Also a great deal for practicing uh, sighting in open water swimming. So tell us a little bit about what we should look for when we're trying to develop our stroke. What should we think about? Okay, well, it, swimming has a lot of components. So what I try to do is take a specific 25 or a 50 and work on one thing. So as somebody I'm instructing, I will tell them, okay, you're gonna do 100 swim, just think about being wide, okay? Wide hand entry. Your next 100, you can work on extending in the front, leaving the pause there so the other hand can come around, okay? Also, um, so each, each drill you're doing, pick up one thing. Because as you know, if somebody can tell you five things to do, you can't do five things at once. You've got to build up. So one skill per set, 100, of, 100 wide in hand, 100 extend, 100 where you focus on the catch, 100 where you're working on the pull. Okay, see how high the elbow is on the pull? I like to tell people, pretend you're swimming in two feet of water. Okay, and then maybe another 100 where you have a quick short, entry, short recovery. So I would pick, I, if you want to work on your stroke, master swimming, a coach, have someone videotape you, watch videotapes online. And I like to watch Colin Pipes, uh, go swim videos and focus on one thing at a time, not too much at once. Um, how long do you need to be in the pool? And how many times a week should you practice? swimming to really become effective and efficient swimmer? Well, of course, it depends on your, your schedule, but um, and everybody's is different, but I would be in the water at least three days a week. Four, if you're really gonna make a concentrated effort to improve your swimming. I like to take the winter time when you're not spending five, six hours on the bike in the pool. So I strengthen my swimming over the winter. The, water, my, the weather like today might be crappy outside, but it's the same in the pool. So. I would say at least three days a week, get in the water for an hour, hour and a half if you can, whatever you can spare, but um, time in the water. The more time, the more comfortable you're going to be. Are there any exercises that we should do um, outside of the pool to get stronger in the pool? Oh yes, it's a lot you can do. Um, take a day like today where it's snowing and you can't get out to the pool. Uh, a big thing is ankle flexibility. I find most triathletes are stronger runners and runners inherently have very inflexible ankles. So it makes kicking freestyle very difficult because the freestyle kick is all from the ankle. You have to flex up and flex down, which is difficult for most triathletes. Um, definitely most runners, especially men, uh, have very inflexible ankles and it's like putting a weight on your feet and swimming through the water if you're not kicking efficiently. So I would grab a, a stretch rope, grab a towel, sit on the floor, stretch ankle forward, 
you point, make circles, okay? You can even sit on your feet if, you're, if your feet allow you to do that. So I work on ankle flexibility, that's huge. Um, I also foam roll, foam roll out your feet, your calves, hamstrings, glutes, quads, um, and don't forget lower back, upper back, shoulder blades, under the shoulder blades, all that will loosen up and um, prevent any kind of injuries. Uh, I work on your core. Swimming is all comes from your core. So planks, I like to do weighted sit-ups, uh, crunches, medicine ball, uh, work on your lats. So push-ups, pull-downs, rows, uh, dips, all very effective. How does the pool translate to open water? Okay, a lot of that is um, pacing. You know, if you're gonna do a long pace, your 500s, your thousands, or all your long, long open water pace sets. Okay, your, your faster swims, your hundreds, your 50s. Okay, they're gonna make your long swim pace faster. Also in open water, um, a lot of times at the beginning of the race, you wanna get out quick. So you're gonna need that speed to get out in front of the crowd. Okay. Um, uh, toward, then you're gonna settle in to your long distance pace that you've used in the pool. And then toward the end of the race, you see that last buoy, you see the shore, you're gonna pick it up and swim right into the shore. Um, also head up, head down, practice your sighting in the pool before you go out in the open water and not sure where you're going. You know, do some head up, do five strokes head up where you see the diving board, put your head down. And repeat that, do hundreds like that where there's at least five strokes every hundred where you pick up and you see the end of the pool. Um, How do you account though for uh, the currents and that type of thing, you know, because the, the water, you know, when you're out in the open water, it could be, it could be anything. I mean, you, you could have a very strong current. How do you, get through that if you just practice in, um, in, the, uh, in the pool? Well, I would say, I mean, generally, if you can get in the open water before the swim season starts, before your try seasons, you do, but like, uh, what do they have? sometimes you can't, um, depending on continue having weather like this, we're going to uh, never see the open water. Um, a lot of that is your, your core, uh, back to what you can do when you're not in the pool. You have a good ankle flexibility, you have a good strong kick, you have a strong core that will help you get through that current. Um, I swim open water, it's rough. My hands, uh, you have a wider entry, it keeps you more stable in the ocean. Uh, my, I tend to come up a little bit higher, get over the waves. I tend to extend out a little bit further. It creates a little spot where I can get my breath. Um, I also don't push back as far. I only pull back as far as I can see my hand and then I come out again. So you have a quick, short, fast stroke, much more efficient in the ocean. Hmm, interesting. And when you're doing a race in the open water and it becomes very chaotic and everybody's on top of each other, do you have any strategies for we are triathletes to, um, ov to overcome some of those obstacles? Yes, well, first of all, know your ability. So if you are, it's gonna take you two hours to do an Ironman swim, don't line up in the beginning. You can swim off to the side where it won't be as crowded. You may swim a little longer, but you'll have a lot less anxiety and a lot more clean water. Uh, you can let the initial rush go, you know, wait another minute, wait another, 20 seconds and let the initial rush craziness go and then get in. Uh, although I wouldn't wait too long because then you can get stuck behind some people who are slower than you are and then you have to climb over them. Um, I like to go right up in front and get out quick. And of course with that, you're gonna you hit a lot of chaos. We said the first time I did Lake Placid, I almost didn't get in the second loop. It was so crowded. I was like, oh, I'm not doing that again. But of course I did. And now that they do a rolling start, it's not as bad, but you're still gonna have some craziness. I tend to count my strokes. You know, I'll strike one, two, three, one, two, three, and keep my mind off the guy next to me hitting me, the, guy, the girl behind me smacking my feet. It keeps me uh, a little bit grounded and to get through that. And you have to realize it usually lasts the beginning of the race and then at some point it breaks up, hopefully. Well, it'll break up for a while and then get crowded. Break up for a while and then get crowded. So you have to kind of ground yourself not to panic when it gets that crowded. 
You swallow some water, take two more strokes, take another breath. Hands wide gives you a lot more breathing room, okay? That way people are not hitting you in the head if your hands are wide. Um, you can have a strong kick, get you around that buoy quick because the buoys are always crowded. You know, you can swim faster around the buoys and then relax back into your own, your own uh, comfortable pace. Is there anything that you could offer um, triathletes on panic attacks? Like, you know, you, you mentioned counting. Is that the best thing to do when, when you do have a panic attack in the water? I think everyone has that from time to time, you know? So what is it that... Everybody has to find their own thing that's going to work for them. That happens to work for me. Um, when I'm running, I also tend to count my steps gets me through those long terrible last six miles of Ironman in Hawaii when all you really want is a beer um <laughs> it works for me you'd have to find your own your own thing but it's not, but find something that keeps you grounded so you're not like oh my god oh my god this person's hitting me this person you know I tend to look up when I swim if I see a little open water I'll 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 take a couple strokes maybe to the side and then get so I can get some clear water uh keep in mind that usually doesn't last a whole swim it's usually for a portion and it may break up and then get crowded again. Uh, a lot of people use mantras, you know, and, and, then, and a saying that they like. But I think if you just find something to concentrate on, aside from getting hit, and, and not to panic, realize, okay, okay, I went to take a breath, I swallowed water, take two more strokes, try it again. If I have to pick my head up and take a couple open water strokes, hey, I do that in the pool all the time. It's not such a bad thing. If I have to do a couple of strokes of breaststroke, that's fine, okay? Um, Nobody's filming you, nobody's, you know, a couple seconds here or there on your time isn't going to matter. Just relax and get through it. You have to regroup, look up, a couple strokes of breaststroke, look around, put your head back down, keep going. This was great. Is there anything else that you could think of that um, would help uh, either new swimmers or triathletes get stronger in the water? Yeah, I mean, master swimming is great. It gets you to the pool at 6 a.m. Um, you have other people to work out with. You're not just swimming laps, okay? Swimming is all technique and all intervals. It's okay once in a while to do a long straight swim, but most of the time it's, you know, 500s on seven minutes, uh, 100s on 130, 100s on two minutes, whatever your pace happens to be. It's all interval training. It's much easier to do with someone else or in a group. Also great to have a coach on deck Who's looking at your stroke? I like to be reminded. I can, you know, what, of, if I mean my hand is a little wide, maybe I'm rushing the front of my stroke, and then it gives me something to focus on while I'm swimming, and I'm not just blindly swimming laps. Uh, if you can, somebody can videotape you, that's terrific. I love to have people that I um, train, I love to have them, even if I'm not swimming with them at the time, I have them be videotaped, and they can send it to me, and then I can take pictures of that video and show them exactly what I want them to do and where they're, what they're doing now and what we want. So that's one of the biggest things. And time in the pool, gotta get in the pool. I know most triathletes don't want to go to the pool. It's so much more fun to bike, it's so much more easier to run. But if swimming is your weakest, work your weakest, work your weakest point. That's awesome, great advice. Well, thank you so much. This was great. I appreciate you um, taking the time out to-, oh, to yeah, no problem, this is home. Snowing out, we're home. And um, just give um, the group your contact information in case they would like to contact you directly. Okay, my, um, you can contact me on Facebook. It's Barbara Cronin Stagnari. Uh, if you go on there and you see a bunch of uh, triathlete pictures, that's me. Uh, also, um, my email is trimom, S-D-J-K, at AOL. And um, I always check my email, I get it on the phone so I can get right back at you. And if you want to get yourself videotaped and send it to me, then I'll be glad to help out. Uh, if you're interested in any coaching, I also I do swimming lessons. I do uh, Ironman coaching, marathon coaching, strength training, a little bit of everything. <laughs> and, um, the best part of it is meeting new people and being social. And that's one thing I'd have to say. Uh, I find a lot of triathletes are, are quite serious, the type A people, but... The best thing really is, is to relax. You do it because you enjoy it and have some fun, hang out after a race, you know, and, and meet the other people. Nobody cares if you're 
ultra fast and ultra slow. I have people, I have friends that are, that are slow. I have friends that are faster and friends with everybody in between. And that's the biggest thing. That's awesome. Well, thank you. You're, you're terrific. You know, really, um, I think, you know, just follow Barbara on Facebook and you'll see amazing pictures. Oh, right. and My goal is to have a lot of All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day.